Hello and welcome back to the preview show. Uh, today we are looking at, I've, I've been practicing this, so I hope you appreciate it, James. Trophio Laweglia? Laweglia? Laweglia. I think I'm not, you slur into one, mate. See, I, I was watching some of the old editions on Rai this morning and they seem to pronounce that first G. Oh, do they? Well, then yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah. I don't know. It was like light leg. Wellia. Leg, leg Wellia. Okay. Could be right. Okay, anyway, it's, it's Trophio Leg Wellia, and I am delighted to be joined by James Knox of Deconic Quick Step. James, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm here in, we're in the next town over. We're in uh, Alessio, but uh, Leg Wellia is, yeah, 2K down the road. Uh, we've just had a little ride this morning. Uh, got to have a look at the finishing climb and a little bit more of the course. Good, and you started off in spectacular fashion last weekend over in France. Uh, I take it you're, you're ready to share your, your, your tale of how the Ardèche Classic went for you on Saturday? Yeah, um, well, start of the season for me, obviously, um, still dealing with coronavirus. I had a bit of a different travel experience this time. I've got the car from, uh, from Andorra, I've driven here. And then actually driven after the race yesterday as well. But uh, yeah, the first race on Saturday, um, Bon Adesh really didn't go um, as planned, to be honest. I, uh, in the end, I had bad guts. I had some diarrhea. I'm not sure what happened. Um, about two hours in, I'm uh, starting to feel the legs already. It's been a hard day. Been eating a bit, but nothing special. Um, and yeah, I thought, you know, must be a bit gassy. Must be something wrong here. So I had a fart to clear the, clear the guts and then that didn't work. So I had another fart and followed through a bit at that moment and realised I was in I was in trouble to be honest. Um and then, yeah, you know, five, ten minutes later I was found a nice spot, came, got the bike, went running behind some uh, trees, uh had to wave the DS down, he threw some toilet roll at me, um, did my business, tried to get dressed back up as much as possible, chased the there was only one car convoy, so to be honest, I was way, way out the arse. Um had to get a bit of help from the DS to get back the last, last ambulance last ambulance is also waiting for me a bit as well so I could uh, get a bit of a tow back to the convoy um, yeah Bramati was DS and he's always quite excited and he was oh try and get the radio back in you know just stay calm and you'll be in the race it'll be okay and I was I was looking at him going listen I'm, I think I might have to shit again in 20 minutes so let's not get too excited and yeah basically Got back to the boys, did a bit of a descent with them, and then we started the next climb. And I just found myself, well, I was in the front, and then yeah, just drifting slowly backwards as I realised I was either pedalling shit myself or not pedalling, holding holding a shit. So then I had to get off again and have a shit. I don't know what I'd honestly don't know what I've never happened before. I don't know what I didn't eat anything dodgy, and that was it. Two in the race, knocked it all out. Was completely fine afterwards. Got some. Uh, standard stuff from the doctor to plug me up a bit and then yesterday I felt relatively normal I had good legs was in the race and can't really complain so yeah it's nice to get it out of the way now just tremendous hopefully... start to the season yeah yeah full, full Tom Dumoulin we've all been there yeah yeah I mean I've never been there you see so I've, I've experienced it now I know what it's all about that that fear is now going to be yeah. there yeah exactly <laughs> and, and then yesterday things went uh, better for you on a personal note you didn't shit yourself uh, and the team took a win with Bagioli and not only that but the team was ridiculously strong, you had five riders in the front group at the end out of seven uh, and you, from what I could see on the my stream that I was watching, you kind of dominated the race Well yeah, it was quite a strange one, wasn't it? I mean, obviously, we had the numbers and we rode aggressive, but, um, you know, the way the race, um, the, the design of the circuit, you know, we had the, the two laps to start with the little, uh, the little walls, the little moors in the last, that we did again in the last 10, 12 kilometers. But there's that sort of section there from 50 to 30k to go where we did three or four longer climbs. Um, and there, actually, FDJ took the race on. I was sort of, you know, I think everyone was suffering. It was a hard pace. And I was sort of thinking, this could be the race there. They're going to set a good tempo, um, make it hard, and then go over to the last walls with uh, some boys to set it up with uh, David Godu again. But um, 
in the end, they just completely lit, up, lit it up. They just did burner after burner after burner, and then Godu attacked with still 30k to go. Um, the best guys could follow him. I was really satisfied that I was one of those like eight or ten guys that made the selection over the hardest climb, but then immediately all came back together. Uh, Dries clipped off. Um, and then from there, it sort of played into our hands, to be honest. You know, I think um, Astana also had a great team on paper, Aji Desire and, and uh, ES2, but we seem to just be on top of everything. You know, I think there's the mentality in our team that everyone wants to be in front, everyone wants to be attacked, and we sort of uh, took it in turns, took it in turns, and then we were all slowly uh, dying a bit, and then Andrea Bajoli attacked. Perfect moment with a little bit of help of Seri, myself, uh, Dries and on a race, keep in a good position, keep the pace just rolling along. And uh, yeah, he made the race, attacking at the right moment, at the right time, solo to the win. So yeah, all very, very happy. One thing I wanted to ask you, obviously, you mentioned there about how you were kind of almost rotating the attacks. What, what are the instructions from the DS? I mean, it seems from the outside looking in that everybody's got freedom, but normally with teams, there would be like an element of chaos. Whereas with you guys, it seems to be more structured than that. What what are the actual instructions from the DS? Uh, let me think. Uh, well, I mean, it was very strange because, um, you know, other than Remy, no one had raced prior to Saturday. Um, and then I think everyone was a bit, other than uh, Mikkel, everyone sort of got a bit of a kick in on Saturday. So morale wasn't down, but there was a bit of a, you know, let's get out there again today you know, save the weekend in a bit. Uh, this is a better course for us in terms of more of us can be involved. Um, and I guess we were just sort of playing the tactic that we weren't going to ride. We weren't going to take responsibility. We wanted guys in the final. Um, and I think we were confident that um, the way Mikkel had ridden and, you know, the performances of Bajoli in the past and also Dries. Um, and then Remy's also, you know, a reliability that is an unreliability in a way that, you know, if he's got legs and he wants to go for it, he's, he's unstoppable. So when you've got guys like that and, you know, they want to they wanna take the race on, it's almost just the DS just, you know, gathering enough of a plan that if this scenario happens and we're looking like we'll go towards a sprint, you know, we can work for Mikkel and uh, Andrea. And if, if attacks are going, we're going to be in the attack. So, yeah, I think it's just uh, having the legs and having the mentality that, you see anyone moving and you want to be a part of it. Um, and just feeling the moment as well. There were some skirmishes before Godou lit it up, but, that you know, FDJ was still setting a high pace. Um, but then after that, you know, we had really 30K of completely open racing, which is good for us in the sense that we had the numbers, you know, if there's more attacks going, we've got riders there. It's just the responsibilities of the guys who weren't in the that attack to follow the next one to follow the next one and uh well, yeah we just seem to be on top of it and then uh, like i said if at the end of the day you still need someone like andrea with the legs and the the composure to finish it off it's all well and good attacking like maniac from 40k to 10k to go but if you don't do the decisive one it means nothing okay and now you arrive in italy obviously let me just get my screen shared with you and we are going to look at wednesday's race so not too dissimilar to the drum classic and that it's kind of lumpy but not terribly so uh you have yeah, done... quite... yeah. i was just going to say it, it's harder than it looks that little climb though yeah so we're going to focus on that just now so on paper the climb yeah. so we do a a, a kind of a, a route roundabout first 120k there's three climbs nothing major nothing's going to happen yeah. and then we do one two three four a sense of the the main climb, there's a tiny little kind of kicker not long after it. The main climb itself yep. was 1.6 at 7.8%. Yeah. Uh, people who have seen this before, this race before, obviously, it goes off here. Not yep. as hard as Giro del Emilia, but it kind of, it reminds me of it a little bit because you just do so many laps of yep. the same climb and they're close together. And the winning move can go not necessarily on the last lap. The winning move can maybe go second last time up, the penultimate one. So you, you recon yeah. the climb today. So what's it like? I'll just click through it. You can talk me through. What's the climb like? Uh, it's narrow, first and foremost. Obviously, you turn off from uh, what seems to be like the main coastal road through the, the town at Lagwalia. 
and it's almost just like a I call it like a a harder version of the Poggio. You know, you got lots of tight switch backs, you sort of through the little uh, coastal coastal town, you know, like houses on the side of the hill. Um, yeah, plenty of tight corners that you can see there from the GPX. Um, and it does have a bit of a bite to it, you know, there's a couple of harder sections from the bottom is very hard, slightly a bit flatter and then steady and then a couple of bites again nearer the top. Um, harder than I thought from having seen just the Bella viewer previously. Um, it's a proper climb um, and I'm sure if the, you know, what, what do we get there after 160k, is that right from what I can see on your Bella viewer? Yeah, yeah, 160k. Yeah. So there's already going to be plenty of uh, lactate or, you know, whatever you want to say, a bit of fatigue in the legs when you start getting there. Nice and view. when guys have, yeah, lovely, lovely view. It's really beautiful. Um, the riders have the, or the teams, should I say, that have the, the legs to, to make it hard on a pace. It's going gonna, it's gonna to split, it's going to cause problems. And it's also directly into a fast, technical, typical tricky little Italian descent um, to make the lap round back to La Guelia. You can see the other little kicker on the on the circuit. That's more just like the main coastal road again that just sort of, yeah, just rises a little bit before dropping down to the finish line or to take the left back up the climb. But um, yeah, the, certainly the climb is going to be, that's the race. That's going to be the decisive place, uh, you know. Um, and I think we've seen in previous winners, um, I didn't see it last year with Giacconi, but I remember watching two, three years of, I can't remember, Simone Velasco won. Um, he might have done like all four climbs on his own or at least three of them. And he was, you know, just riding a strong, strong pace on his own and then taking the descent full. And it was kind of hard to catch him, you know, because there's not a lot, you don't lose a lot of time if you're taking the descent fast and you're climbing well. You're just doing that repeated effort, repeated effort behind the possibility that it's a bit stop start. So, you know, it just always depends on how the the race situation pans out. But uh, yeah, if you have a gap and you have legs, it's going to be also hard to bring you back. Yeah. So the hardest points just at the top. So obviously, yeah, you talked there about lactating the legs. You know, you're hanging on for grim death, and then you get to the last couple of hundred, and that's when it's ramping up over ten percent. You can, I think that's you mentioned Chikuni last year. Chikuni, he put them all to the sword last year. He went quite easily dropped everybody but this year is totally different because in the past this race has been one for the the smaller Italian teams you know not many big teams have been here trekked under but in fact Ciccone rode for the Italian team I think last year when he won but yeah, this year right. this year's totally different you know your Andronis and your Bardianis are going to be finding it quite hard to do what they normally do up against you boys NAS, AG2R, I mean, the, the start list is brilliant for this type of race. Uh, so yep. four times, you know, you're going to arrive here at 160K feeling not too bad. Normally, you would expect the first kind of two times up to be quite, you know, steady. And then last two is when the shit will hit the fan and it will go. Uh, the descent you mentioned, fast, one name I did see on the start list is a... Uh, Amate Mahoric. Oh, yeah. Yeah, who's I love gonna, that. Who's going to love this type of... I mean, it's not the most technical descent in the world, but it's still technical enough, don't you think? Uh, honestly, I mean, I've just written down it twice. It's a bit of a shit road on the corners in particular. It's tight. There's little visibility around the corners. If you're a quality defender like Matty Morovic and you have a tiny, tiny gap, and you go full down a descent like this, or even if you have a gap three laps to go, and you know he's a guy who can ride a bit like I said before, keep riding a strong pace on the climbs, and then put an extra ten seconds into everyone on descent, and then ride the little back the the section back to the uh, the start of the climb again. You know, hands over the bars as aero as possible. You know, you're gonna find it really, really hard to bring a guy like that back because. Um, yeah, it is a tight and technical descent. It is uh, it's tricky. Yeah, the, t the top of it seems quite tricky. A couple of nasty-looking switchbacks. I mean, it's going to be a nice sunny day, so there's no worry about the, road, yeah. the wet roads or anything like that. But I think, for me, what makes the race is just how close together the climbs are. There's no yeah. there's no recovery time, is there? 
No. And I think, you know what you said before? You're probably wrong about the, the first couple of times it's been steady. I think there's going to be, there's a lot of teams there. There's some big teams there. There's the, there's the, the general nervousness that comes with, uh, I mean, I, I didn't race 20 years ago, but I get the impression now from what everyone says and just my feeling in the race, always a lot of stress to be in front. Every team's going to be saying, be in front for the first climb of the day. And yeah, that stress causes the speed to go up. The speed will be hard on the first climb. Everyone will be in front for the descent because before you know it, you're back on the climb and it's just going to turn into like a full falls out war, to be honest, because we'll go so hard running into the climb, first climb, first descent, second climb. By the time we reach the, the last two climbs of the day, there's already going to be a reduced bunch, a lot of tired guys, and just let, basically we'll have the, the riders with the legs left. So that's how I thought see it going. And you, the team's strong. As always with you guys, you've got Bagioli, who's fresh from his win yesterday. We've got Ballerini, who's fresh from his win on Saturday. Uh, Three Stevenines, we've got Garrison, we've got Seri, Van Sevenen, yourself. Yeah. Lots of, strong. Lots of options, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Ballerini and Bagioli have to sort of stand out to be leaders in the sense i mean i'm curious to see ballerini in all honesty um i know how good he is i think i still think it's going to be hard for him but uh i mean if you can't drop him he's going to win obviously um and he's an amazing bike handler amazing at position which gives him an advantage on a course like this Bagioli, we saw what he just did to everyone in uh in drome and then yeah hopefully with the the rest of the team Maui was in great shape in Provence. Um, Garrison hasn't raced yet, so he's going to potentially find it a little bit tough going, but hopefully as well get stuck in there and have good legs. And uh, yeah, and myself, honestly, um, I was just happy and relieved to have legs to be there in the final and be able to follow guys. That was a good confidence boost for me and I hope to be able to do the same. Um, but sort of can say with a bit of honesty that clearly uh, Bagioli and Ballerini are going better than I am. and riding an extremely high level so we'll see what happens i mean obviously i'm not the ds i won't be making the shot uh making the calls um but uh curious to see what our plan is because like you say we have different options there um and two of the big favorites now i mean if ballerini goes and wins the um loop and then he comes here and he wins this hilly circuit i think there's many teams and many riders who will be a little bit worried about the rest of the season yeah yeah no, he's uh, some rider, though. I mean, I think as much as anything, I saw what he did just riding spot the pink jersey at the Giro last year, and that was a that was a crazy I know for me. You know, he was riding on the front of the bunch when I was only 50, 60 guys there, just riding tempo on climbs day after day after day. Doesn't look tired. Doesn't get cold. That's one thing. He'll be short from jersey when it's eight degrees and raining. So there's not many many blokes around like him so yeah very very impressive young man and then we've got the final little kicker so this one's 1.25 at just over four percent it tops out with three to go i mean it's not it's not hard but potentially if there's a small group last time round there is a, a little yeah. to, to make a move i mean you're right on the coast there's enough of a hill there to expose maybe somebody who's really tired after making a big move i just did two laps of the circuit and honestly I, I i barely even noticed it so it's certainly not hard but like you say um the race scenario if there's a very select group and people without teammates and people not working for the sprint going into the final then yeah there's a possibility for a for a launch pad and also yeah attacking over into the sense of the finish you know if you have a if you have a gap and there's a small hesitation with that sent more or less the sense of the line, then it's important. What's your thoughts? I mean, I'm looking at it. I'm seeing the repeated climb. I'm looking at any of us. I'm looking at you guys. I'm thinking it's not going to be a particularly big group, uh, but potentially there will be some sort of smallish sprint, I would think, maybe, with the last climb being the last big climb is, what, 10K from the end? I'm thinking reduce sprint. What do you think? Um, I've not seen the lineup 
Um, I actually don't even know which world tour is it, which world world tour teams are here, which which riders are here. But um, just knowing how you know that there is a lot of world tour teams, knowing that you know guys are with all this coronavirus stress, I think everyone's already in really good shape, and the way all the racing's been so far, I mean, I think it might be even. I wouldn't even call it like a reduced group sprint. I think it's really going to be like a proper selection of like six or eight guys maximum or, you know, someone pinging off solo. Uh, maybe not like in Chicone style, but, you know, proper race exploded, barely anyone in left sort of situation. You mentioned there the, the COVID stuff. Some people have mentioned before, you know, guys coming into the start of the season thinking that, oh, this might be my last race. I'm going to race it hard. Have you noticed, I know you've only done two races, but have you noticed a sort of higher level compared to previous starts? Um, I mean, I don't know, probably not, probably not massively different. I just guess the, the general attitude is that um, maybe less, a little bit less now, but you know, back when it was um, December, January in, there was the every all the cases going up, races are getting cancelled, and I think just the general creates no, you know, everyone gets a bit nervous, there's a bit of stress. People want to be good in the opportunities they have, um, and I think there's just, I think there's just a general trend in the sport. Again, I haven't been in the sport very long. I'm not talking about 15 years ago, but you know how it used to be sort of quite commonplace that people arrive in February, March, and be working towards goals in April or working towards goals in May even or whatever and not caring the world it now seems to be like very structured training has to be to the point everyone arrives at top level and then doesn't get much better to the big goal um so in that sense yeah I think everyone is going there's a lot of riders going very well but it's more or less the same for everyone isn't it you know like I'm certainly not going bad myself if I'm still there in the mix in yesterday and I don't really know any better, to be honest. Races are just hard. That's all I've ever known. You know, I've not, I've not really had the opportunity to go a race and it's been an easy race. So, uh, yeah, I just, is what it is, really. You're, you're not a uh, Matthew Van Der Poel who can just attack way to Katie Go just for a bit of a laugh. Yeah, I know. I've, I've, it's a good one, that, because occasionally people sort of say, oh, you know, why don't you get in breaks more? Why don't you tap more? And I'm like, well, it'd be nice if I could just ride off the... 60k to go and you know get caught and not really worry about it and then go for the sprint but generally speaking when you, you don't have the legs you just resign sitting in the bunch and do what you can uh, now I'm, I was thinking today so Giro last year these kind of short hills seem to suit you quite well obviously coming from Cumbria there's lots of little short hills do you think this is a kind of a good type of race for you um Definitely when I'm going well, uh, it's a race I'd be really, really all over. You know, I don't normally start the season fantastically. I was quite happy. I was satisfied to see yesterday that I was, you know, following the good guys on the longer climb, still there in the mix. You know, I struggled for that last 20K. I was sort of almost cramping, which probably just a lack of racing a little bit, you know, all those accelerations. But uh, like you say, short, punchy climbs, plenty of experience of that back home. And then also I did a couple of years. Um, amateur with Zappies in Italy and it appears to be this is just textbook Italian racing you know they love a circuit they love a little short punchy climb descent into the finish this is like bread and butter for Italian amateur scene so I've done plenty of this and I've relative success um I'll be honest I used to think this was really something I excelled at but as I've sort of moved into the professional level and seen the the world-class riders at this level that real five minute punch you know really just riding through the lactate for five minutes putting out the big watt um i'm not as good as that as i thought i was clearly i'm not bad you know like you say in the giro um you know if i'm doing it two weeks into a grand tour i think i can do it very well but on a one day one big hit out um it is hard you know the guys who are really smashing these races are, are really flying so you know i'll i'll back myself to try and get involved again on wednesday um but taking the win against the lineup we have and even the riders in my team, I'll be, I'd be pretty shocked. So we'll see what happens. And what's next for you after Wednesday? Um, from Wednesday, I drive on. Uh, like I said, I've been, been taking the set on a little bit of a road trip uh, from Andorra. So I 
carry on with the car while the boys are in the bus, um, go over to uh, Tuscany. Um, I think, I'm not even sure if I'm even a reserve. I'm, I'm, I won't be doing it, but uh, I think we stay in the same hotel for Strada Bianchi and GP Industria. Um, I don't even know if they're nearby, but I think they're relatively close to both Tuscany anyway. So while we're riding GP Artigianato, the Industria on Sunday, which again, looks like a pretty similar, like I said, bread and butter Italian racing, you know, sort of quite flat, first 160K and then four hard climbs on laps to finish, I believe. Yeah, it looks a bit tasty. Yeah. To say the least. Yeah. And after that? Yeah, after that, um, back to Andorra, uh, get some more work done, um, try and work on that, you know, having that racing in the legs now, uh, build up a bit more of the base and those long climbs and then I'll be off to Catalonia. Easy race, that one, Catalonia, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, it's one that I should be excited for. Obviously, the problem is it's a bit of a, a bit of a goal, a bit of a target. You know, it feels like the first proper race for me to get stuck. No, not proper race, but first race for me to get stuck in the sense to see where, I, you know, how am I going? Can I do a, a good GC ride? Um, I don't actually know what our, our team is, but uh, yeah, kind of scary, just the thought of it, you know. It's always a really top-level lineup. It's always a really difficult parkour. Weather can be a bit iffy also, just to throw in there. So, fingers crossed that goes well. Um, and then, then from there, yeah, um, looks like I'll be building up towards, I think after that is Romandy. And then, hopefully, probably Giro, but yet to be official. So, yeah, fingers crossed for that. Nice. Nice races. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right, James. Well, thank you very much for giving up your time today to look at Leweglia, as even I said different that time as well. Yeah. There'll be some Italian guy watching this absolutely shouting and screaming at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, getting hounded on Twitter. Oh, yeah, that's it. They, they, they'll be out to get me. And uh, best luck on Wednesday. Hope it goes well and the team bring home yet another win. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Thanks for talking to me.